All right, so this video picks up where the last one left off. And if you remember, during um, the last video, we talked about the fact that Spain claimed a lot of land in the Americas, France claimed some land, and Portugal claimed some land, and eventually England will claim some land. But we are now focusing in on the main goal, which is our country, the United States of America. And if you look at the land outline there, that is today, what is the United States of America, you can see that some of that land was controlled by Spain, some by France, and some by England. So if you remember, we talked about the fact that when Spain claimed land in the Americas, they did not treat the Native Americans very well in their new land, New Spain. They murdered Native Americans, they stole from them, they enslaved them and took their land. Not very good treatment. The French treated the Native Americans in their new colony in the Americas much differently. Instead of murdering and enslaving, they chose to trade with the French and actually let the French stay on the land of New France while they were partaking in the fur trade. That fur trade with the French is going to play a huge role in the next chapter of history, so don't forget it. But we know that the French eventually got a little greedy, which is where that smirk comes from, where they were trying to get more for less. But our main focus, guys, without a doubt, the most important character in our story of our country will be England. Because if we're focused on the history of the United States of America and how 237 years ago in 1783, our country became a country, it all starts with England. And so that was what we started focusing on with chapter five. So here's where chapter five is kind of sitting for us. We know that the original map of European power countries claiming land, that Spain and France and Portugal, they were claiming land in the 1500s. For whatever reason, England is late to join the party. It is not until the 1600s and into the 1700s that England will claim land in the Americas. And you can see that little tiny chunk of yellow. And even though Spain claimed all that land in red in less than 40 years, England is going to take 126 years to claim that little piece of yellow there. And they're not going to do it all at once. They're actually going to claim it chunk by chunk by chunk or colony by colony by colony for a total of 13 colonies. And since England is the country that is claiming that land, those 13 colonies are ruled by the King of England. And the people living in those 13 colonies are called colonists. Now, where we're heading next is those colonists living in England's 13 colonies start to get angry. They'll start to get angry at the way they're being treated by the King of England and the rules and laws that they're making them follow. But then they're going to get angrier and angrier until the colonists are so angry that they feel that they have no choice but to declare war on England. And that is the Revolutionary War. Now, England should totally win the Revolutionary War, and they should win it easily. Because during this time of history, England had the strongest army in the world. Colonists didn't even have an army. But somehow, England will lose. The colonists will win. And not only will England lose the Revolutionary War, they're going to lose their 13 colonies. Which means in 1783, when the colonists win the Revolutionary War, those 13 colonies, they're no longer ruled by England, which means we can't call them colonies anymore. A colony is a place ruled by another country. They aren't ruled by anyone. In fact, they are free to become their own country and rule themselves. That is why they call themselves 13 states. And they decide to name their new nation, their new country, the United States of America. Everything you see on this slide this is going to be our focus for the second trimester. So hopefully you're excited to learn like what's making the colonists so angry in the first place or how did England come to claim those 13 colonies? We started talking about the very first one, but we didn't get past that. Maybe you want to know how the colonists managed to beat the strongest army in the world. Or maybe you want to know who are some of the people that participated and fought in the Revolutionary War. So there's so many great questions that are going to be answered in trimester two. So we know that when our country was born, we were small. We only had 13 states. Those original 13 colonies are now combined as the United States of America. 
And today we've grown the same way you've grown since you've been a baby. Our country's grown today into the 50 states we have. And that land is, remember, once controlled by France and Spain. So we'll get into that too. So really, guys, where it all began was in the 1500s, like that map where we color coded the land. That's when Spain and France were claiming land. But England will not start claiming land until the 1600s, and it will take them all the way through part of the 1700s, over 100 years, to claim those 13 colonies. But we did talk about the fact that England tried to claim land in the Americas. 1887. And that story was the lost colony of Roanoke. And I'm not going to review the story, but I am going to remind you that we had 117 men, women, and children go missing on the island of Roanoke while John White was back in England trying to get more supplies. And when he returned, the colonies were nowhere to be found. We talked about the relocation theory that they tried to leave and, and go somewhere else and were lost at sea. Maybe the assimilation theory that the colonists um, were starving and, and joined a friendly tribe, maybe the Croatoan tribe. Or maybe they were attacked by local angry Native Americans like the Roanoke tribe. We also introduced the Spanish attack theory that the English rivals, the Spanish, maybe came up from Florida and didn't want the English settling. Or we did talk about the big fat liar theory that maybe John White knew all along that they died and just tried to cover it up so the English people would be willing to try again. But regardless, England's first attempt to claim land in the Americas, the lost colony of Roanoke, ended for England with an epic failure. Now, I will post in the Google Classroom a link to the Roanoke song so you can watch it on your own time, but I'm going to keep going with this video. So the Queen of England during the story of the Lost Colony of Roanoke was Queen Elizabeth I, and the failure at Roanoke was too much for her. She never, ever tried again, but she will not live forever. She does die, and the person that takes over as the ruler of England, King James I, realizes that the queen was onto something. And King James I decided to try again to claim land in the Americas to start an English colony pretty much right where the queen had found originally. And that is going to take place 20 years after Roanoke in 1607. And this will become a success for England. That location is Virginia, named after Queen Elizabeth herself. And that will be when English claims their very first colony. So in 1607, England will claim colony number one. But remember, England's going to take a long time to claim all 13 colonies because I just answered your question for you. How many colonies will England claim in all? 13. And so Virginia is the first that they'll claim. And then over 126 years, Finally, in 1733, England will finish and claim the 13th. Now, I want you to try and remember, this is a good little trivia. Here are England's 13 colonies. You can see uh, their names there. The last and final one, the 13th was, that's right, Georgia. Good. And if you remember also, our very own Pennsylvania was one of England's original 13 colonies. And Pennsylvania fell at number 11. So what we ended with was an activity where we learned about the story of how England came to claim Virginia. And when you claim a colony, you have to start with a single settlement or village. And England's first successful settlement, we did in a sketch to stretch activity. And so if we go through the questions here and try and remember, what was the name of England's first successful settlement? Well, the 105 men and boys decided to name it after their king. Since his name was King James, they called it Jamestown. And these 105 men and boys that came over on three ships, what were they looking for? Well, it was very simple. They just wanted gold. But we know that they were so focused on finding gold that half died the first winter. And then they eventually made another John, John Smith, their leader. But even with that, they needed help. And with the help of the Native Americans, who they eventually became friendly with, the colonists eventually learned how to grow something. 
And that ended up being as valuable as gold because they never did find gold. And the Native Americans taught them how to grow tobacco. And we know that the story of Jamestown was con connected to the famous story of, you can see the little hint there, Pocahontas. Because if you remember the story, John Smith gets captured by Native Americans. He is about to be executed, to be killed when the chief's daughter, Pocahontas, saved his life and created a peaceful bond between the colonists and the English settler, or excuse me, the colonists and the Native Americans. And so we ended with the story of Jamestown, Virginia, and we ended up watching Pocahontas. Um, I will also post Mr. Betts's Jamestown song as well for you. So we are going to be focusing before we can get to what makes the colonists angrier and angrier and angrier. We do need to figure out how did England come to claim all 13 colonies? We know the story of Virginia with the settlement of Jamestown. We are then going to focus on England's second colony. Take a second. Any guesses what it might be? I don't have the map up there for you to look at. Hmm. Well, it's not Georgia and it's not Pennsylvania. It will actually be Massachusetts. And we're going to go through this the same way we went through Virginia with a sketch to stretch. Why? Because it is also connected to a famous story. And famous stories, that's right, have movies. We will not go through all 13 colonies one by one by one. We wouldn't have enough time or energy to do that. But the story of Virginia and the story of Massachusetts are both good. And like I said, are both connected to famous stories. So we will be doing this um, as your next activity, similarly to a sketch to stretch to learn about England's second successful settlement. So Virginia was in 1607. Massachusetts will become the next uh, colony with the successful settlement of, well, I'm not going to tell you. We're going to have to wait for that one. But if you're not sure what the famous story is connected to, you can see a little hint with the video, excuse me, with the picture down here. So that is it for the video today. Um, go back and watch some of those songs and add that interesting fact from today's video to the activity sheet from yesterday if you were someone who was assigned that. Great job.